afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on the time of day or night at your location as you watch this video. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, I'm here with another spiritual insight word to share with you. And today, we're still on the Money and Destiny series. And today, we are talking about a type of money that you can receive that can really change your destiny. This type of money, once you come into contact with it, once you touch it, once you receive it, once you accept it, once you use it, it can really change your destiny in a very big way. That is the topic for today. It's how are you going to recognize this type of money and how are you going to effectively safeguard yourself to protect yourself so that you don't ever come into contact with that type of money, okay? So before I get into the details of that topic, I just want to welcome those that are here for the very first time. If this is your first time on our channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you on board. For my return viewers, uh, thank you so much for your continued support. For my subscribers, thank you very, very much. Um, the African Girl Empowered and from time to time, I put out spiritual insight, uh, words to educate and to create awareness about uh, our destiny and the fact that destinies can be stolen or exchanged and so these videos are to educate you on how to recover your stolen or exchanged destiny so that you can walk each day of our life live each day of your life in accordance with what is written in the book of destiny about you that is in alignment with psalms 139 verse 16 okay so let us now continue with today's topic of discussion so money yes cash we're all looking for money because we need money to survive we need money to buy the necessities of life to buy food to uh, afford shelter to pay for the services that we need just to sustain everyday life it's very very hard to find um, someone today who does not use or need any money at all can live their life without ever touching money it's very hard so we are all looking for you know a way to earn a living and that happens through money okay now there's a type of money that you can receive that can really change your life right it doesn't matter the amount <laughs> that you receive. It could be that you receive even one cent or one shilling or one dollar or one CD, one kwacha. It doesn't matter. One naira. It doesn't matter. Um, it is what this money means in the spiritual realm. So remember, I say that money is both physical and spiritual. That this also underscores that point. Money is both physical, you can use it here in the natural life to purchase things, to purchase services, but it is also spiritual in that it can be manipulated from the spiritual realm, okay? So with that in mind, it means that there is money that has a physical meaning, but there is money that also has a spiritual meaning. So in general, money, receiving money is a blessing. Like you, you have a dream and you're dreaming that you're receiving money. That is a blessing, right? Because money is part of what makes up wealth, all right? So um, money can be seen as a blessing. So receiving money can be seen as though you are receiving blessings, right? Um, but with this type of money that i'm talking about it is the opposite <laughs> when you receive it when you touch it it is actually the transference of a curse all right and it can manipulate your destiny like your, your destiny can be manipulated through you coming into contact with this type of money what type of money am i talking about here this type of money is called blood money it's called blood money. So if you've ever heard of blood money, please put it in the comment section before. What do you think about it? What do you understand it to be? If you've never heard of something called blood money, well, this video is for you. 
all right there is something called blood money we're going to look at this uh, from the Bible because we use uh, the Bible to look at biblical truths. We also look at spiritual principles and spiritual laws from a Christian perspective. And so we use the Bible as our reference point. Now, let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 27. Let us see if we can find this in the Bible. So Matthew chapter 27 this is talking about Judas. We all know who Judas was. Judas was one of the 12 disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we know that Judas is the one that betrayed Jesus Christ. Now, in that betrayal process, there was money involved. Yeah. Money changed hands. So um, in, in Matthew chapter 27, we can see, let us go to Matthew chapter 27. We see that Judas went to the Pharisees and he knew that they were looking to um, arrest Jesus Christ. So he offered and he went to the Pharisees and he says, you know what? I can find a way for you guys to, uh, to get a hold of Jesus Christ for a sum of money. We're also told in uh, John, it's John chapter John chapter 12 verse 6 that Judas loved money. He was a thief and he used he he was the treasurer for the money that they were receiving in Jesus ministry, right? So uh Judas was in charge of the money bag. He was the treasurer, but he used to steal from that treasury and he used to take it the money and use for his own things. So he was a thief. He was stealing from that money. Okay. So now I think he wanted even more money and he decided that there's a way he can capitalize on, on the situation and earn some money from it. So that's what he offered to do. And they agreed on a sum of 30 pieces of silver. So when the deal was done, he told uh, the Pharisees where Jesus would be and that he would lead them to right where Jesus was and hand over Jesus to, to them. The deal was done, so they paid him his money, right? And so um, after this uh, transaction has taken place, now he sat down and he realized that Jesus is now going to be executed. Jesus is going to lose his life as a result of that arrest. And so he he was uh, now shocked. After all is say, said and done, he was shocked because he realized at that point, after it's been done, that he had betrayed Jesus and Jesus was going to now die as a result of this. And so he was seized with remorse. He went back to the Pharisees. He wanted to take back the money. He, so he went back and in verse 4, it says, I have sinned for I have betrayed innocent blood. But they told him, what is that to us? They replied, that's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, it is against the law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. Okay, there is the term. That is where it's coming from. Matthew chapter 27 verse 6. That is where that term comes from, blood money. So based on this verse, this type of money, the blood money, is money that has been obtained from the selling of someone's blood as a sacrifice, from the betrayal of an innocent person. It is money that is received from the, from the giving away of someone to suffer harm, to suffer um, negative things unjustly, okay? The person is innocent and they have been given away or their destiny has been given away in the case of destiny exchange their glory their destiny has been taken away um on account of a sin on account of a curse on account of something that they didn't do they are they are righteous they are innocent but they have been given away as part of that transaction so that this person can receive the money because to receive this type of money, you have to give away something. And so in the case of Judas, he wanted more money. He had to give Jesus away. 
right? And then he received the 30 pieces of silver. So this is a spiritual principle when it comes to the blood money. So some people who want money, they are like Judas. They want more money. They figured out that using the powers of darkness, they can obtain money. But in order to obtain that money, they have to give some blood. So Jesus went and shed blood on the cross. That is a concept of the blood. He went and shed blood on the cross, right? And that blood was worth 30 pieces of silver to Judas. That is what he received. That is the payment he received in that exchange, okay? So some people want to receive a certain sums of money and they will be told for this uh, amount of money you want to receive, this is the amount of blood that you will have to, um, to hand over. So it is not their own blood they're handing over. They will be selecting somebody from among the people they know whose blood will be taken in that demonic exchange to balance that demonic transaction, okay? It's a give and take. So they will give the blood and they will receive the money. Now that money they receive is what is called blood money. According to Matthew chapter 27, verse 6, okay? That is where it's coming from. So if you hear that term, it is there in the Bible. That is where it's coming from. It's a spiritual principle that is being applied even in the kingdom of darkness. All right. So now when Judas received this um, money, when he realized that this has gone too far, Jesus is going to be executed and Jesus is going to be crucified and Jesus will die as a result of this. He felt guilty. He felt remorseful. He tried to go and reverse things. So he went, this is what we're seeing in Matthew 27. He tried to go and change things. He was like, no, no, no. I, I, th I didn't think that you guys would take it this far. I thought you just wanted to arrest him, put him in jail for a few months and then release him. I didn't realize that you wanted to actually end his life. You guys did not tell me you want to end his life. This has gone too far. But at that time, the Pharisees got what they wanted. And so they just told him, you know what? Just, just leave with your money. It's already done. That's your responsibility. If you're feeling guilty or whatever, you want to change your mind, that's your responsibility. These are the exact words they told him. Okay? So Judas, he left. He was now feeling like, oh my God, what have I done? But it was too late to change things. You see, these are the things with the spiritual uh, laws and principles. Sometimes it's very difficult to change things once things are in motion, right? Prevention is always better than cure. So anyway, Judas left and he threw that money with them. He did not keep that money because he realized that it is blood money. He didn't want to have it in his possession anymore. So what happened? So after that, these Pharisees are talking and they are talking about their laws, their spiritual laws that they follow. And so they said, now they have this money. What are they going to do with it? They cannot put it back into their treasury where they put all of the other money that they receive and use for their budget and everything their bank account, they cannot go and deposit this money in their bank account. Why? Very, very important. It will defile their whole treasury. It will defile their whole other money that is there. As soon as this money will come into contact with all of their money over there, it will defile all their money that is there. They will not be able to use it again. It will become impure. Why? Because this is blood money. Very, very important. Okay? So they decided to go and buy some land somewhere. And that land, no one has been able to live on that land up to today. In fact, that land is, uh, is, is sort of like a burial ground. Because nothing grows there. It's just a uh, waste. So you can see even the land itself that was used to, uh, that that money was used to purchase. There is nothing fruitful. 
coming from it anything associated with that money there was nothing fruitful from it it's only death that was associated with it that is why it is a burial ground the money was used to buy a burial ground that burial ground is called akeldama i think it's called akeldama right because it was used it was purchased using blood money so this is very 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 serious right? It's very serious. So if you're innocent and you don't know, and somebody comes and they're giving you a gift, it's like, hey, I, I just wanted to help you out. I'll buy you this, or I'll give you this money. You can go and buy whatever you need. You can buy shoes, you can buy bags, you can buy a car, you can buy whatever. I'm just feeling generous. And they give you this money. If you don't know that it is blood money, this is what is going to happen to your other money that you have in your bank account. As soon as this money comes into your possession, you deposit it into your bank account. Whatever other money already has there becomes cursed. So you will start losing everything. You will start to lose all your money and it's just going to waste. You cannot do anything meaningful with your with your money the plans that you have you can't just fulfill them right if you go back to look at how this happened or why it could be that you came into contact with blood money so sometimes this is a strategy that the kingdom of darkness uses in order to keep you from your financial destiny because uh perhaps now blessings are starting to flow in order to stop that flow of blessings or in order to stop you from achieving those great things that God has in store for you, they'll find a way to defile your money, your finances. And how do they do that? Through the use of this blood money. So you may not be the one going to do rituals to get money or whatever. You're trying as much as possible to be honest in everything that you're doing in order to earn your money in a honest way right but because there are still some altars that are, are speaking against your financial progress then this is one of the strategies that might be used it might look so innocent someone is just giving you some money and it seems as though they are being generous or whatever but as soon as you come into contact with that type of money the blood money then it sort of defiles all of your financial savings, all of your money, and you find that you everything goes to a waste until that money is finished. So if it's savings, maybe you had 1,000 shillings or $1,000 saved, someone comes and gives you $10 or 10 shillings, that is blood money, and you didn't know. As soon as you receive this money, that 1,000 shilling savings or that $1,000 savings, it just starts being depleted so fast. You had planned to go and buy a new fridge with it. You plan to go and, you know, repair something in your home with it. You plan to go and do something that is um, uh, like real progress, tangible progress, and you couldn't do that. You just found that all of a sudden, people are calling you that you're owing this, you're owing that, you didn't pay this, you didn't pay that or whatever, and all the money is gone like that. Or all of a sudden, some emergency has taken place and you have to use all of the money, all of it, not even one cent will be left. In fact, you go into the negative, you'll be owing, right? So that is how it looks like if you didn't know this it's actually there in the bible the pharisees the teachers of the law themselves were, were talking about themselves and they said they cannot put it back into their they cannot put it into their treasury since it is blood money it is against the law which law the spiritual laws the spiritual laws so whoever comes into contact with that money it will defile all of their savings, okay? So this money can be used as a source of defilement for so many people who are innocent and they don't even know, right? So some people who are like Judas and they have a greed of money because we are told in John chapter 12, verse 6 that Judas, he had a greed for money. He was a thief, right? And so there are people who have a greed of money 
and they go to do money rituals to receive money and you're thinking ah that's their own issue you you're just innocent you're going about your business in an honest way right so whatever they are doing there and the money they are receiving from there you should be very careful not to touch it in any way because if you touch it in any way your honest hard works uh payment will become defiled even though you never went to that altar to go and do those money rituals right so it's very very important for us to be aware of this how can you tell that this money is from that this money is blood money how can you tell you have to test the spirit before you receive any money from anyone you have to test the spirit go to god in prayer so teach yourself to always tell somebody to wait even if they are in a hurry like i'm giving away this money if you don't take it right now this is your last chance you'll never get it again especially if there's a sense of urgency attached to that request and you don't even understand why it is so important for you to say yes right this minute okay that's another red flag <laughs> if the deal is too good to be true think twice pray about it okay it could be a trap because a lot of times with these type of money rituals the money that the, those people receive they are also told that they have to spend it within a short period of time why it is because anyone's hands that it comes into contact with, their own hard-earned source of uh, income or savings or whatever becomes defiled, right? So that is the goal as well. And so these are agents of defilement of other people's um, savings, right? Or, or finances. So it's not just that person's destiny that is altered. It is all the people's... Um, destinies who come into contact with this money as we've seen in the case of matthew chapter 27 right and so before you receive any money from anyone make sure that you're praying make sure that you're before you receive that money that you're covering that money with the blood of jesus okay that you are in your heart you are covering that money with the blood of jesus very very important and once you receive that money, you're taking a, a part of it and dedicating it to the Lord. So that a part of it ends up on God's altar. All right. And how do you do that? If you don't attend any church where you can give it as an offering in church, if you don't attend any church, and there are a lot of people who don't attend any church, and that's okay give it to the poor, give it to the widow, give it to the orphan and uh, just express that you're giving these as you're giving to the Lord, okay, to God Almighty. You're giving a part of it before you use it for anything. You've prayed about it, you've tested the spirit, you've received it, you've covered it with the blood of Jesus and then now you're taking a, a part of it, a certain proportion of it, you can decide what proportion to give. Um, you're giving some of it to the poor in the name of God. Okay. Um, so you're, you're, you're giving some of it uh, back to God. According to Isaiah chapter 58, you're sharing that bread with, uh, with the poor and the unfortunate in the society. In our case, widows and orphans okay that would be the first priority if you can't get any widow or orphan in your community then anyone who is needy very very important here it is not the person that is coming to you to ask for help no it is not the person who is coming to you saying please help me no it is someone who the holy spirit would have put in your heart to go and help. So as you're going through this process, you're praying, you're testing the spirit, you're covering this money with the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will also impress upon you who to help. Okay? And so that way you'll go and do that. And then now what is remaining 
is the one that now you will be able to use after you have followed this process very very important and at any time if you feel something some hesitation in your heart especially at the first instinct just stay with it just keep going do not look back if you pray about it and you feel that the holy spirit is telling you wait stop just don't even think about it that's your confirmation if there is so much urgency with the need for you to accept this money that's a big red flag as i've said before like if someone is really insisting that you have to take this money and they will not take no for an answer take off take off that's that's your biggest red flag right there okay that's your biggest red flag right there so there are certain things that you can do to protect yourself from coming into contact with this type of money okay if you've already come into contact with this type of money you didn't know this video is just being released you didn't know about this concept and it is new to you but you found that you already received it in the past and now you're going broke everything is falling apart but you realized from this video that this is what happened same thing you can do you can go on a fast you can break that agreement that you entered into dissociate yourself from anything to do with how that money was obtained and uh you break that covenant you bind that spirit and after that you repent of this sin and any iniquity that is associated with how that money was obtained and whoever's blood was uh, spilled in order for that money to be obtained, you repent for that sin, you confess um, with your mouth. If you've not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that now his blood can speak on your behalf because his blood speaks better things on your behalf than the blood of Abel or the blood of anyone else that was spilled at that altar for that money to be received. And so once you do that, then now you are very careful not to repeat this again, because now you're aware you resist any attempts for the reinstatement of this type of a covenant, because once it has happened, then they will try again <laughs> in another way. But now as you are aware of it, you will be careful not to repeat this again. So you just keep on resisting any attempts for the reinstatement of this covenant. As we are told, resist the devil and he will flee. Okay? So those are the steps that you can take if you realize that you already came into contact with this type of money. You go on a fast, you break that agreement, you cancel that agreement, and then you repent. And then you, um, you plead the blood of Jesus to cover you and to speak on your behalf, to pay for all the debt that is owing, right, as a result of this, and to pray for the rest restoration of your destiny that has been manipulated through this type of money coming into your possession, okay? So those are the things that you can do. So I hope that this video is useful, is helping somebody out there today. As usual, if you like this type of content, do not hesitate to like this video. If you know one or two people who you feel this may be of a benefit to, do not hesitate to share this video with them. Lastly, if you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing to formally join our growing family thank you so much as usual put your thoughts down in the comment section be below and any questions that you may have so that we can discuss this topic further thank you so much i look forward to seeing you in my next video have a wonderful wonderful and a blessed day bye bye